What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is September 16th, 2021, and this is Got Her Attention podcast, I guess? Season 2, episode uh, 14? I'm sorry, I'm thrown off today, because I'm, I'm here with Kelly and Brian, and a special guest, Bruno. Oh yeah, what up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> He's actually it's nice here. to be here. If you're listening, yeah. he's actually <laughs> here. He's in the studio. He is, he's actually. I was here. legit trying to figure out where you were going with that bit. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah. <laughs> Some things never change. The openings are still a little, uh, a little shaky. Little, yeah. A little he, shaky. Yeah. He I mean, does read whatever you put on the the yeah. tele- <laughs> Took like a <laughs> took like Absolutely. a two year two year sabbatical. Came back. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> still here. Just kind of what you did. So it is fine. Just 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 copying you. Oh, man. Love it. How fun. I'm glad you're back. Mm. Glad. Uh, oh, yeah. I know Me you've too. been out in the field reporting and I know it's uh, I actually <clears throat> talked a little bit last week about your experience from from the experience that I knew of what you said about Dragon Con. Um, but feel free if you wanted to fill people in on your experience, like overview, yeah. whatever you could do that. But um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it was like when, like now. No, I mean whenever you want to. I mean, yeah, sure, right whenever now, or later. Yeah, you can yeah. just... I mean, Dragon Con was, you know, you brought it up, so yeah, now. Yeah. Sure, you yeah. can just interrupt I us mean, later, you... like middle of a story. Yeah, I figured that'd be a lot more entertaining. <laughs> no, that's I could you, just Mike. cut you off when you're boring everybody or something. I don't know. Or if you like about Dragon Con. off track. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dra- Dragon Con was good. You know, we were vending there, so in terms of like actually enjoying panels and things like that, it's not not as easy. But it was it was interesting to see a convention that is used to such a large scale, first of all, be scaled down to like 25%. Um, second, to see the people that did turn out um, and the effort they still put into the costumes they showed up with. Um, the cosplay was still very much there. A lot of really, really good co- Honestly, there were some that were... I feel like there was a lot more... like. For what was there, there was a lot more high-quality cosplay than what I'd expect for 25 percent i feel like there was almost like an equivalent if if it was at full capacity it was still like we had that much high quality cosplay and i think that comes from the fact that so many of the people that come to dragon con um do come for that aspect um so with two years off essentially or two years in between each dragon con they were they were like really putting in their hours (laughs) to come in strong yeah no i I Um, agree with that like i'm i didn't get to attend this year either but like when I do get to go attend, maybe potentially next year, like I'm going to go. I'm definitely cosplaying multiple days because like I want to get some cosplay in because it's just. Been, yeah, been a minute. just just a lot of a lot of really good work put in by by the people that did show up. Um, and what impressed me the most was they had mask mandates. Um, it was actually a lot more efficient than I thought it was going to be. Nice. Mask mask like masks were required. And to get your badges the way they did it um, was really smart. You know, you had to show proof of vaccination or um a test from the past three days that showed that you were um you know negative for covid um and it worked i mean you if either you had those things or you didn't get your badge but didn't get your badge you didn't get in um and honestly i didn't see a single person that was a guest as in someone who was paying to go to the convention uh not wearing their mask um uh, the only we, we saw two people and they were actually two vendors that refused to wear their masks appropriately or at all um, oh, wow. so that was unfortunate dims the um, rules buddy like come on but, uh, oh but yeah. so be it um everybody else followed the rules i was really impressed it was a good time it was a good show i um, got to see a lot of people you know that we've ended with last year a lot of other um guests that show up to the convention so uh it was great it was great it was good to be to be back there and uh next year we're going back again but i think we're gonna go bigger we're gonna we're gonna buy two table go slots bigger, go home um Nice. And uh, we're just going to we're going to go ham. Um, if, for those of you out there that don't know, um, we vend at Dragon Con because my wife is um, a somewhat popular artist. <laughs> somewhat popular. I mean, you can name drop if you want. If not, it's fine. Uh, she's uh, Savannah Alexandra Art on Instagram. Um, former character designer illustrator for the TV show Archer. She's so, amazing. Um, yeah, she's pretty awesome. Check. It was really oh, cool. She's an awesome her person. Butter arts also. Now. Yeah. Her fans still turned out, which was really cool. 
Um, not as many as the previous years because obviously 75% of the people not coming. That means that some people are mm-hmm. restricted from showing up. Um, but those that did show up were super awesome about it. Like people would show up to her table and be like, we want to buy stuff for all the people that couldn't make it this year and we'll send it out to them. Like, you know, can you just sign all this artwork, stuff like that? So it was really nice to see um, the people that, that came out were like really just well-mannered about the entire experience. Nice. Um, and I would say some and, of her uh, fans are kind of like almost a community, right? Cause like, cause like yeah. some of her characters are like all together um, and yep. they come in like yep. a pack and actually do photos. Which and everything, was so. funny. We actually saw her, uh, her rollerblade sailor scouts um, Aww, designs cool. that she made. People cosplayed that set and actually showed up to her booth. That's awesome. um, so it was still cool. We still got to see a lot of people. So Dragon Con was a win. We didn't get to see all the things that we'd like to see because, you know, you're saddled to a table the entire time. But sure. um, it was still awesome to be there. So sweet. Well, that's good to that's hear. Sweet. Um, Like we I mean, we talked to you briefly uh, when you were kind of in the mix of everything. And uh, and we heard, you know, Brian's PAX information. And it sounds like both of you guys had a really good time, even though with the limited availability and the limited type of uh, people attending. Um, but it seems like it still was efficient. So that's cool. Yep. Good to hear. Well, I guess uh, let's get into our favorite bit. <laughs> oh, oh, a favorite bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to Kelly's creepy corner. Uh, I'll start off with my creepy DIY. Uh, last week I did a skeleton hand jewelry holder, uh, which is has been posted on my uh, day drink ATL uh, Instagram. Uh, and then also we did our guest appearance last week. Bruno was uh, Michael Myers. He was in the background the whole time, though. So, yeah, that's All sick. Right. Yeah. yeah so he, did, he, it, did he kill anybody? <laughs> no, he just scared me the whole time. It was amazing. Oh, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I do with uh, when I'm decorating my house for Halloween is I go to the dollar store or you know party city or places like that. Other amazing you know, spirit Halloween. Everybody gets credit. Sorry. Um, and I buy things that I fix. Um, everything that I buy is typically not up to my standards. And uh, one of those you can go to the dollar store and get really amazing stuff as long as you repaint it or, you know, add shading, stuff like that. So she one hasn't of done my cosplay, isn't that isn't that wild? I like know. She's literally saying all of the I things know. that cosplay involves. <laughs> and she's like, I've never cosplayed before. Next year. It's oh, I'm, you're definitely on. happening. That's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite things to get from places like Party City and the dollar store are these holographic um, uh, pictures that when you look at it one way, it is, you know, a person with a top hat. Oh, uh, right. And then yeah. you look at it in another direction. It's like a skeleton or a ghost or there's creepy stuff behind them. Um, but they're always like super a debt cheap, collector. Right. Uh, yeah, a judge. <laughs> something Police really officer. scary, like a tech lecture. Uh, but uh, they always come with like there. It's like one piece of plastic or, you know, the pla- the background is also or the frame is also holographic or whatever. Um, so a tip or trick that I suggest is go to the frame section of the dollar store or go to your local Goodwill or whatever thrift store and buy a frame. Keep in mind that when you're buying these frames, something else might be inside it. So don't get distracted by the crappy picture that's inside. <laughs> uh, this is one of them. So I cut out the uh, picture from the really crappy plastic frame that's just the same piece. And I put it in another frame. And I have about a million of these. And I have that's an awesome. entire wall. That is just these. So they look like real. Yeah, like pictures. actual family yeah. photos that you. Yeah. Oh, man. And I get bigger ones, different sizes. So um, this one's not showing up real well. And you can see everything that's happening here. But um, <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, that one's really a, a good one. So. Uh, you can see that this is big. So I have a whole wall that I do that I put these hang these 
photos up on photos, family photos. Uh, and, and so when people walk past when they go and use the restroom or whatever, um, they're like, oh, and my girls really like it. They're like, ooh, look, and they get sidetracked. I'm like, don't pee your pants, go potty. So that's my, my I guess my Halloween hack, not really DIY, but uh, a way to make something look uh, much better than, you know, the dollar that you spent on it or yeah, no, in some cool. cases 499 <laughs> yeah i mean even with that like going to goodwill and getting a frame like that's a couple bucks as well but that's pretty awesome yes uh, yeah like most of the frames that i got from goodwill were um like max 249 or something like that so very cool sweet well, there you have it. yeah uh, so i do have two very creepy true stories for you today who were brought to us specifically from mike (laughs) so zycia came to me with one of these and i was like oh my god can i use this for kelly's creepy corner and uh then he came at me with another one and was like i'm taking this one too like i almost thought these were both satire and like i almost thought like you were the one putting these news feeds like in my (laughs) phone I was like, obviously, they're just listening to me and they're just putting stuff into my phone to mess with me. Yeah, (laughs) it it just screamed Kelly's Corner. So, yeah. So milkweed butterflies, there's a a, a bunch of different kinds of milkweed butterflies. A monarch butterfly is actually a a milkweed butterfly. But um, there are uh, uh, some who. Specifically, the males. scratch at the caterpillars of the same species and then drink the oozing liquid out of them, which is basically milkweed sap. Uh, They do this because it attracts, they get the pheromones and it attracts the female butterflies. Uh, But it is freaking crazy. Uh, They found some of these caterpillars dead and they weren't sure if they died because they were scratched to death and like sucked dry by the other so male. Gross. Yeah, <laughs> so disgusting. Um, so there, it, it, this there was a study that was done specifically for this. It was like for science. It, it was for science, but it's kind of some really really creepy science. Um, they even found them drinking it just straight up from the, the dead caterpillars. So, and they weren't sure, like I said earlier, like did they scratch them to death or whatever? Uh, so that one kind of scared the crap out of me. The other one um, were these butterflies that were released in Finland um, as a part of more research and in, in, in to, to repopulate, but they didn't realize that when they, release these butterflies they released them with these parasitic wasps so sometimes they'd release these butterflies in caterpillars they wouldn't survive these parasitic wasps wasps would emerge run havoc wreak havoc and then also, inside those parasitic wasps were other parasitic wasps that killed those wasps and then wreaked havoc I uh, this disturbing. Is, this is terrifying nature. Yeah. Disturbing is, is is a good way to put it. Like, I literally thought this was a satire article when I read it. I was like, yeah, this is obviously April Fool's. But I'm like, wait a minute. This is not April Fool's. So <sighs> this is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll find we'll find a place to post links to both of these horrific articles. <laughs> I, I love the fact that they they go to release a new species and inadvertently introduced three new species yes two of which should be in a horror movie <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's just they're, you know, they're just things. trying to make a living yeah, just yes. trying to make a living yeah. oh god gotta do what you gotta do well cool let's uh i guess let's go ahead and get into the news Coming to you live from a studio audience recorded in some basement of parents' house. Yeah. 
No. Kelly, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I guess I will I start off the you. show or this segment of our show. I was listening to NPR and heard this article about female gamers, uh, esports gamers, and how they're not making one, not making as much money as uh, male esports gamers and are not as popular. Um, it, I wanted to get your take on it. I, I was fascinated by it and I did do some additional research on it. I started looking up some of the um, or watching some of these uh women on Twitch and watching them game and really the article struck me because uh, they said half near almost half of the world's gamers are female now um, and not very many of them make up esports. So of the top 300 earners, this marketplace.org article references, um, not a single one of them is a woman, which was shocking to me. Um, they did also reference that um, there is an all female um, team on Cloud9 called Cloud9 White, and they play Valorant. And they, since I'm going to be you know, uh, editing this podcast, they fing kick. Uh, but they also they did interview a couple of other, uh, you know, esports game women, esports gamers. And they said, you know, one of the things that, you know, they do encounter is and I know that there's a lot of trash talking in esports, period, but it, mm -hmm. it's very polarized. Either it's, oh, my God, oh, my, I can't believe you're a girl or you're so hot. And then there's also get back in the kitchen and, and crap like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people very have, sexist comments like the satirical one that I started this all off with. But in their case, <laughs> not very satirical. I, I heard a lot about that in the fighting game community. And and when there was women starting to go professional in the fighting game community, mm they had commented on this like yeah because because literally the sexist comments that were being made were being made already from guy to guy right like you're just a bitch blah blah you mm. know i mean that being tame compared to what they actually say right right um and so the women came in and they're like this really isn't cool guys and they're like what we've been doing this all the time you can't handle the heat. You should go home, you know, and all this like BS and it's, it gets ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it really should be cleaned up because especially with the popularity increasing and the age ranges that is pop that that's popular in. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it, you know, yeah. goes back further than that too. Cause like, it's even like, you know, we could even get into the whole like job thing, like the whole people mm. working jobs and like women have never been equal to men, like in the workplace. They always end up getting paid that. less than men for mm. the same job and all that stuff. And it's funny because I've, I've even caught myself um, kind of a victim of this, not even intentionally trying to be. But I remember I went to a concert and there was this band and they were amazing. It was all female cast. All the band was completely female. And after the show, I was like in awe of how great they were. And I was like, yeah. wow, you guys are really good for a girl band. And uh, but yeah. like I didn't mean it in a negative or like in that type of way. And then I had to backtrack because they were like, what? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what I mean. Like, like, you know, you're you're great for girls. And it's like, no, no, that's not. Oh, but it's and, but that's <laughs> yeah, I can feel Mike's, myself. Mike's like, right, skin. right. But that, but that was the whole thing. And yeah. walk away. But that was the whole yeah. thing is, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard. Like, yeah. that's just the way society has been. So like me just saying that wasn't like I intentionally meant right. like they're not as good. But that's just the way that society has always made this out to be. So the it's, fact that you recognize that, too, and you're like you're not trying to defend it either. So yeah. Let, yeah, let me be clear. Like Mike's not like, Oh, you know, it was okay for me to say that. Like you're like, I'm not defending this. I realize like that wasn't cool. Like everybody has to kind of change their mindset at some point too. Yeah. And one of the things that one of the suggestions was is, well, why don't we um, split, you know, make a uh, men and women's esports? And they were like, 
you're you're literally taking away as a woman playing in esports you're literally going to take away such a huge segment of the gaming population for me to play against you know so so well, it's segment of the market mm -hmm. i mean one just has to look at the NBA and the WNBA right. to have an example of that. Right. And that's a good point mm -hmm. is actual mm -hmm. sports. So well, yeah. I say, see, I messed up. I said actual sports because esports oh, yeah. <laughs> to some people. And I say some yes. people because people have different mm -hmm. opinions that esports isn't like a real sport. We should definitely have right? a, like they can't be later. They can't be that. athletes because they're not physically doing something like an like a, a Tom Brady, a LeBron James or something. Like, how can you compare yeah. these people to that? So in that same sense, like women versus men in sports, like like football or something or I don't know, basketball. Like I guess we just talked about that. Like, but how would you feel if all of the teams were at the same level? Like you could play men and women on the same team. Right. right. Like, do you think genetically that's OK to compete against like that? And then you can get even further than that, which is like yes. people who don't identify with the same gender they were born with playing on. You which know, is something that, that are, came up. During the Olympics, that that was a right. hot topic during the Olympics. So mm -hmm. definitely. Well, and I, I, I think actually you, you saying about like, you know, if you started with a team that was open to mm -hmm. anyone that brings people that don't identify with uh, the binary genders, bringing them into the team is even easier at that point. Right. Yep. And goodness knows that there have been some fantastic short basketball players. And mm -hmm. I do that with air quotes because like they look short compared to everybody else. Cause they're only six, three Steve Nash, uh, that guy, it, I thought he Scotty, was my height until Scotty I looked Kevin it up like and he was like short, six foot three. Right? <laughs> I was yeah, like, and oh he my was God. super short to get everybody else. And there are some women basketball players out there that are much taller than that. And I mean, I have no problem with them playing on the same teams. No, and I think, I think some of them would love it. <laughs> I think one of the, one of the good things with reference to at least within esports is unlike non esports, it's a much younger sports community, which means that it's had significantly less time for the BS of like, you know, girls being locked out or women in general being locked out of the, the different kinds of esports that exist. There hasn't been as much time for that to happen, oh, yeah. um, which means that it's easier to sway people in the direction of these people should be included because mm -hmm. you don't have. As many hardcore people who have a voice that matters. Yes. There's plenty yeah. of people. There's plenty of people with voices out there who are like, <laughs> women in esports, that's gross. Nobody wants to see that, but they don't matter. They're just like losers behind their screen. Um, so the ones that that do matter and have those opinions are far and few in between. And and then top it all off, the gaming community is most is is majorly an online community with younger people. And younger people are much willing to do something that the older, uh, like regular sports community isn't, which is they're willing to destroy people within their community for having opinions that are garbage yeah. Um, yeah. and canceling those people out. And we see that time and time again. Um, so as more women, in my opinion, jump in and manage to find a way, provided other companies help them to find their way into those spots, and more of these veteran players, these veteran male players who show up on those top 300 lists because mm -hmm. they've been in the industry for like a decade or more. They're like grandfathers of the esports community. That's why they're still there. That's why like they're 34 years old and still on like Dota rosters. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. as those people retire and those spots free up, uh, the community's made up of 50% both genders um, or what miscellaneous gender you may fall under. Um you start to kind of integrate women more and hopefully in the next 10 years, we start to see a much more even spread. Um, I say 10 years, not It'll to like offend anybody, yeah. but because I'm being as realistic as possible yeah. that 10 years is probably a wishful way of thinking about it just because of how slow things yeah. change when it comes to uh, those aspects of communities. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the trouble of mm. of some of the internet things you said there is it's a sword that cuts both ways because yes even if it's <laughs> even if it is a young sport and in theory should be more open and should allow you still have like if you look at overwatch that was male dominated for years the first woman that ever joined joined for a single season and then ducked out and some mm. of it was from the absolute 
storm of hate that came her way. <clears throat> yeah. Which yeah. is um, where the companies have to really get involved. Yes. Which is yeah. what I was saying. Like they have yeah. to be accountable for their communities and be like, no, 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 no. Listen, like this is absolutely unacceptable. Like we don't care what you have to say. Like this is our community. This is how we're going to run it. And we're going to be very strict. Our terms of service are there for a reason. If you breach them in any shape or form, you're a band. We don't care about your losses. Come yeah. back when you've decided to be mature about yeah, things. Grown up. Which works for the things that they control, but they don't work. For, it doesn't work for the things that like memes coming out of 4chan and stuff that is blown up on Twitter and and all all the areas and avenues that this hate can flow down that affects those that are watching and then affects those that are then trying to watch the Overwatch tournaments. And I mean, it's it hasn't had a good answer yet. Unfortunately, yeah. it's gotten better. I mean, because uh, so that was the Shanghai Dragons I was talking about. And it was uh, I'm, I apologize if I butcher this in advance. Uh, Gijuri, I think, is the. Uh, Num Diplom that she went under, basically. Um, and uh, again, she. I will always give her credit for being the one that like broke into the overwatch and inspired people. And because of that, we do have more women in overwatch now. Uh, mm. But boy, she had a rough time at it and I'm just hoping we just get better. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's going to be a while before we get to starship <laughs> troopers where like everybody's on the field playing and there's just, you know, doesn't matter. They go in the same locker room. Everybody's having a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. I'm just I'm just I'm just thinking about like remember it was the same showers too (laughs) yeah everything was the same yeah Yeah, I don't even like I mean I I've gotten to a certain age where you know I don't really want to shower with anybody else other than my husband and (laughs) (laughs) I mean they were in the military I guess it's a little different they were yeah it is it is it absolutely is and Uh, and it was also fictional so It was also a fictional um, fascist regime. (laughs) So, I mean, it was satirical about an extremely bad regime. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It was a good movie. It's actually a great movie. Considering that uh, it didn't very well follow the original (laughs) material and the original material was fantastic (laughs) too. Anyway, back uh, to uh, women in gaming, is also Kelly. Basically saying the same thing. <laughs> so I would say sorry, uh, Well, I was gonna say, like, what are y'all's opinions? If you have an opinion, send us an email. Yeah. Tell us what you think. Yes, please do. Um in, in, in opinion, chat, but. thanks for jumping in on there too. So um that's uh I, I, it is I feel like eventually women are going to dominate because a lot of times we do. Um, we dominate in lots of stuff and don't necessarily get the credit for it. So, uh, yeah, you have to bear children. So like you automatically win. Oh yeah. I mean, but like, I think it's, even if you identify as, as a female, you know, like I think there are certain lots of characteristics that, um, that you will definitely dominate. I, I, I was I actually had a, a discussion with a friend um, earlier last week, and she was actually trying to say uh, that she well, she doesn't have many friends, female friends who are like alphas. And, you know, the, the female friends she's, the, or the, the people she's worked for that are alphas don't, you know, she doesn't really like. And I I had to I, I kind of stopped myself short because I didn't want to like offend her, but I I. Th- my I feel like a lot of times I'm an alpha like I can kind of dominate a conversation I can yeah you, you know can. just take <laughs> thank you I, I know you guys know this <laughs> I can I, I can take control of certain situations whether you want me to or not and I think that being an well, alpha we always want you to uh, yeah <laughs> thanks <laughs> I think being an alpha as a, a woman can have a negative connotation and you think like, Oh, she's just a bitch. But I think being an alpha period can have a very positive connotation. Um, it, it, 
lots of really great things can come out of being an alpha, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, so I, 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 I just I like, like we're talking a lot about, you know, changing our, our opinions, changing our minds, educating ourselves and saying, hey, you know, my past references may not be my you know current philosophy. So, yeah, agreed. Yeah, we got to get woke. Yeah. Hashtag get woke. Hashtag. I'll do I'll, I'll, next tweet. I'll, I'll send what? it out. I'm, I'm awake right now. Woke. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what? We'll talk about it later. Are, are you guys sleeping right now? Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, <clears throat> also a shout out for all the people that are watching us live on yeah. youtube that's pretty cool thanks for joining us guys really appreciate yeah. it yeah shout out to all y'all uh chat anywhere chats chats active uh across the board today so <laughs> really shout out to all of y'all that aren't even watching us <clears throat> appreciate y'all we, we, yeah. we love y'all too they're listening to us later or not just just not even caring we shout out yeah. to y'all and i i, I don't want to call <clears throat> somebody out specifically on chat but to that person who's <laughs> chatting right now, I love you so much and thanks for joining. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Brian, take this away. Uh yeah. <laughs> take this away from <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> no. We're uh our, our next story covers um something that we've talked about on and off for the last two years. God, really. Can we get rid of it? Um it's uh nope. it's the the age old epic verse Apple that ended up including every Technology company, game company under the sun. Back in my day, um, when Apple and Epic <laughs> were fighting. <laughs> so there's like finally been an interruption. <laughs> there's finally been a conclusion, kinda. No, it's it's a conclusion. Not not the one that either side probably wanted or anybody cared for, but um I'm not gonna read the uh the more complicated version of it. I'm going to read the way that they summary, like they summarize it because it makes more sense that way, to be totally honest. Um, but essentially, <laughs> the conclusion is um, from the Apple side, um, iOS apps must now be allowed to direct users to payment options beyond those offered by Apple, which is um, essentially a large portion of what Epic was arguing for. Um, the argument is like Apple has what Epic considered or is trying to say is considered a monopoly on the market. And because they force people to essentially pay out 30% or something along those lines of all transactions that went through Apple's Apple Pay function um, for apps, um, that they were essentially strong-arming developers into paying money that they shouldn't otherwise have to pay. Um, to give you a little bit of backstory um, that's very brief, uh, Epic Games decided to go rogue and create an in-app payment system to circumvent Apple's uh, implementation of payments, um, which was a contractual bleat, uh, breach, which <laughs> Epic thought that they were going to get away with doing that and not have to suffer at all. Um, but the other half of this is uh, the judge ruled that in the countersuit, Epic Games does owe Apple $3.5 million for lost money during the time that the app was live using the in-app purchases that they had embedded within Fortnite. Um, so both sides technically lost or both sides won, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, um, so now going forward as of 90 days from, I think a couple of days ago when this passed, um, oh, on December 9th, um, Apple will no longer be able to force people to... Uh, put their payments through Apple's payment system. So Apple will no longer be able to take that 30% revenue if the company doesn't want to do that. If they want to create their own payment system within their own application, they're allowed to do so going forward. Um, so that's essentially the first part of the story. Um, so the saga, finally, after eons, as it seems, has come to an end. <laughs> Except it hasn't. Because Except, wait for it. <laughs> legitimately, like the next day, Epic was like, no, 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 no screw this and they filed an appeal against the apple app store lawsuit ruling. oh my beer <laughs> they haven't nobody's indicated I mean... exactly what epic is looking for just that epic has filed an appeal um against the ruling that was made so you can assume that they are not done yet for um for this entire saga are you so saying prepare for another two three years i guess or, or even a fortnight <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I'm helping fund this. Yeah, same. 
Damn it. It's Brian giving uh, me this stupid You totally game. got sucked <laughs> in, Mike. You are so... You are that's like, been his never, dream all Never will I play it. Oh, man. Sucked in Vortex! Yeah, I'm like totally on the subscription <laughs> thing. It's a month or whatever. It's, it's insane to me that either side wants to keep this going at this point. Well, like, neither of them have anything to gain from it, in my opinion. Yeah, it's interesting what they're appealing for. And maybe... The only thing I can think of is maybe trying to get less money paid. Like, maybe not have to pay as much money that's the only thing i could think of that why they would because they wouldn't want to take it back to like have to go through apple's i still like i don't know i it just it, it's it's weird i think that there's still a fee for hosting applications on the ios device on top of the um the transactions within the item mall so what my assumption is is maybe they're appealing because that still exists and they feel like it should be uh, an open market that they're allowed to post whatever on. That's the only thing I could think of that yeah. that would make any sense monetarily for Epic Games to be willing to drag out this ridiculous process even <sighs> further. Because this isn't just like Seriously. this isn't just piss off Apple. Like you got to think all of the companies that got pulled into this because of the lawsuit. We even saw Walmart. That confidential <laughs> that information. Cloud gaming. Came, or whatever. Became confidential information that became public information mm -hmm. because it was court yes. documents. Like, yeah, we reported so on that. There's many companies. crazy stuff. Also, yeah. by the way, in other news, uh, we now have our next meme, which is the Kelly Vortex. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I just slip on my chair. <laughs> oh, my God. You think I'm joking. I'm going to make a giphy out of that that people can use. Yeah, it's going to happen. Oh, God, I should have exercised. My arms wouldn't be so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you, you can get my whole shirt. Whoa! <laughs> oh my God. So Sorry. into other news uh. that has been a hot topic lately, and this one actually goes back around to the hate uh, raids that we were seeing on Twitch. Wait, are they still around? They, I don't know if the hate raids are still Sharp around. Image? I'm sure it's still happening. The no, hot topic. Oh, the hot topic. I mean, it's yeah. definitely still happening because all what you're he's, about to discuss happened after. He's, the he's hate referring raid, to so. a bad joke. Yeah. That he was saying the, oh. the store hot topic, but oh, yeah, no. I'm sure they're still around. <laughs> So so uh, if you guys are familiar um, on the first of September, we all took off from tw uh, streaming on Twitch to stand up for the, the stop hate on Twitch uh, and we stop hate raids and we stopped streaming on Twitch for that actual week uh, for the two mm -hmm. different times we do stream. And we moved to YouTube and Trovo, which were, hey, we picked up and we're kind of just rocking forward with it because, you know, yeah. why not? Uh, so. After that happened, uh, they they, they I'm announced. I'm enjoying it. I think it's fantastic. Sorry, love yeah, no, anybody who's watching on YouTube, Trovo, and Twitch. We love you. Thank you so much for supporting us. For sure. Uh, the data and that came who's out. Listening on the podcast, by the way. Can we take a listening. drink for her. Thank she you just too. keeps. keeps <laughs> just going. keep interrupting and, Mike, and that's well, and, what he like, and, I like to do. Brian, this is where you start talking about Dragon <laughs> and, Con again, and repeating what Mike <laughs> said like three minutes ago. Yeah. So, so I will. Well, I'll post. <laughs> I'm going to keep interrupting you. I'm going to really post the drinking game <laughs> on um, the uh, SAS uh, Instagram. We need bingo cards. So that, yeah. We need that. Or, OK, well, you so, know, I made the drinking game, man. You can make the okay. bingo. So the after <laughs> the then, data came out from. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> after the data came out from the numbers of people being off Twitch, it, it wasn't a huge impact. Uh, and we talked about. You know, most of that most likely being because of the fact that uh, it wasn't like super well communicated throughout the all the community. Like there was some major names that definitely took off that day, uh, but it wasn't like there wasn't really enough time to organize something like a massive walkout or something. So, uh, you know, it was an impactful thing. And we were like, well, what's going to happen next? Is Twitch going to do anything? And we're all like, no, like Twitch is going to do the same old thing that they always do. Nothing. And they're just going to keep tracking along, whatever. But news came out. Shortly after this, this was on September 9th, that a complaint had been filed by Twitch uh, against two anonymous individuals that believed to be behind some of the hate raids. Uh, so they actually have um, started a lawsuit against two anonymous individuals who operate under the names of username Cruz Control and Creatine Overdose. Uh, and apparently <laughs> they were the ones who helped promote and organize and engage in these hate raids on a large scale. So this is actually kind of a win that they're kind of like actually trying to actively yes. do something about it. Um, that was one thing that we had talked about was it, I, when we brought up the story last, we we're like, 
I mean, are they just going to, you know, be like, oh, OK, yeah, we're going to do something, guys. And then it'll just get swept under the, under the rug. Right. But to your point, like something's actually happening. So this actually is something that people are like, wow, this was like unexpected. Mm-hmm. Didn't expect that because, I mean, we all got the email saying like, you know, in Twitch, we care about our mm-hmm. community. And we, we kind of laughed about that. And we're yeah. like, yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to get. That's our response. But yeah. then yeah, we, we see this. We all got it once yeah. one of us checked his uh, yeah. junk folder. Had to find the junk folder. But yeah, you know, whatever. It's there. <laughs> um, but of course, Twitch can't just be can't leave us on the high horse and just be happy. Right. So on September 13th, <laughs> they uh, they announced this new thing called ad managers. And you can literally do all kinds of new things for your ads, which is. Schedule by ad frequency and length. You can snooze mm. them. You can uh, skip the first ad delay uh, and you can schedule your ads rather than having it always when you join someone's channel, it automatically plays an ad. You can actually schedule them so that during your stream, they go off at certain times to help break up the you know the, the ads that are going on. Um, well, of course, the, the community didn't take this very well because they're <laughs> like, how about we do something about the hate raids, uh, which, <laughs> you know, they, they started to. But. Like we have, um, it's Annie Crevice or Crevice maybe, uh, but she's posted that. She says, glad to see you guys got your priorities right. Streamers being threatened, doxxed, and racially and transpho- uh, transphobically attacked. Mm-hmm. But don't worry, we can auto schedule ads now. <laughs> and uh, a few others. I mean, going to that same point, but it's. I, I will say that, like, I. <laughs> uh, I guess to back up Twitch, like, they have to, like, their main focus is not to stop hate raids one and they've got other things there's there are people who've been working on being able to schedule ads yeah before the hate raid stuff happened right so i i I, there are developers there are marketers there are tons of people involved in all of this stuff and then for somebody to come along and be like okay but what about the hate raids man like yeah. Yeah. And I agree with that because, yeah. you know, if they hadn't already started the lawsuit mm-hmm. against these two people, yeah. I would be like, yeah, I don't yeah. blame you. Yeah. But yeah. for them to come out and say this man, but- shortly after this was already announced, like I said, this was like three or four days later. Uh, and this has already been published. So you would already know this happened. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of like I, I understand you're still upset and I understand that that stuff is still happening. But yeah. You got to give credit where credit's due. They're they're literally Absolutely. trying. They're at least trying. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's mm-hmm. a big step from what they have done or haven't mm-hmm. done in the past. Yes. So that's the, the Twitch update. <laughs> uh, to round things out is a quick update on the world of Xbox. Uh, Xbox has, like the PlayStation 5, uh, expandable storage. Uh, PlayStation 5 seemed to have the advantage that you could use, again, air quotes, any NVMe SSD, but it was a very, like, they didn't even put a list of what was compatible. They just listed specifications, which I believe last time I started reading those off, Mike slipped into a mini coma. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But Xbox had gone a different route where they had you go and you purchase this little square thing. You slot it in the back. Super easy. You don't have to take off the thing, uh, take off the side of the console. You don't have to undo a little flap. You don't have to like figure out how to put an NVMe like you would into a motherboard, which granted, if you build computers, it's easy. If you're the average mom or dad who has Mm. a kid that's like, I'm running out of space on my PS5. I heard you can expand this. This whole process is not easy. No. Uh, I mean, you know, for dad, who is, I don't know, a sales executive in, in a company like he, he didn't know how this stuff works. Yeah. Like I, I've got one of those. Not yeah. a sales executive, but somebody who'd be like, uh, yeah, I don't know. He, he didn't it, even know how to YouTube it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, whereas <laughs> Xbox had this really easy thing. You buy this little square thing, you plug it in the back and you expand the storage. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But of course, and understandably people were like, uh, but the Xbox it's, it's proprietary, which means that there could be price markups and there could be, uh, it ended up that it was really the same price pretty much within 10 or 20 bucks. Uh, but it, you were still limited because you only had the one size, uh, you only had like the one manufacturer. 
supposedly there is a smaller size coming out here in a little bit, but who wants to go smaller? Uh, instead, though, some people. This one. Guy, I mean, I got married, which is crazy to think, but <laughs> you are lucky. Hey, you, you don't know that she moved. Up. She didn't move up. She moved up when she met you. Oh, man. Uh, so one guy actually found out that the expansion card used in the Xbox Series consoles is actually a CFE Express card. It's a standardized connection. It's not what? as proprietary as people thought. And interestingly enough, you can get CFE Express card adapters that will adapt that to NVMe, which is the SSDs that you put into the motherboards and the PS5 and everything like that. Uh, specifically, you need a PCIe 4 SSD. And so what he went out is he went out and purchased the same one terabyte Western Digital SN530 SSD drive that's inside of the Xbox because he wanted to match it just to make sure that it was uh, similar enough to verified work plugged into this adapter and this plugged it right into the back of his Xbox. I mean, and if it works, you know, wouldn't you know, it just worked. <laughs> wow. So hey, it's I mean, not it quite as proprietary as people think. He suspects that if you have a similar performance SSD or better, that probably would work as well. Um, now, granted, this is not a cheap way to expand your Xbox storage because with the adapter and the drive, you actually end up costing more than purchasing the Seagate built together function. But it does give some flexibility to those that want to possibly do a larger option, like doing a four terabyte SSD to put all their games on. Uh, again, there he has no one's done the testing yet to determine whether you can put a larger SSD in there or not. They don't know for certain, or even if you can use a different manufacturer. But you know, this is one step closer to that uh, ultimate goal, really. Man, I can't believe that people still care so much. <laughs> like that, there's because this isn't the only article I've seen of this. Like the discussion about. SSDs on Xbox versus PS5 has been like one of the primary things that both sides won't shut up about. One side, shut. oh, well, the Xbox one's limited to like the specific ones that they manufacture and that's garbage and that's why that console sucks. And the one's like, oh, well, that one you have to manually install it and it practically takes a rocket scientist to put in one of those chips. And it's like, they're both easy. And yeah. <laughs> They both have their positives and negatives. Um, yeah. Except for, I mean, I guess this has its positives, but specifically with this, I feel like the whole adapter and the SSD combination for additional cost to a regular user, they'd be like, wait, 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 wait. So I got to get a chip that's like an NVM CD or something. And then I got to get <laughs> yes. M M like MVHS. I got to get like and a... CD. An adapter of some sort? Is that like like a like a power adapter? Like the ones that you plug in to like charge something? And again, like, no, 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 no. look at this picture. <laughs> that looks super safe. That doesn't look like it's just gonna break off. Yeah. I mean, come Especially on. if you have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's toast. You know, it's uh, yeah. well, and again, that that's a that's a quick thing. Like somebody could I, I could see a third party manufacturer putting the adapter on the end of a cable and then having the NVMe in a box similar to what you would have for an external hard drive. I mean, I think it's cool. Like if I had an, if I had one of the new Xboxes, I would probably do exactly that. Yeah. See if Oof. I could get a larger drive installed for it. And then I would just 3D print a box to go around it. Yeah. Or, yeah, or you okay, take it a step sure, further and I make, mean, make a network yes. share on it. <laughs> just like figure out the slot, run it to an actual network share, and then you have it in limited storage. But hey, that could I just also have a PC. Work. Granted, or, or maybe we have... shouldn't be talking about this and we should just be making money off of it, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, I think the network storage would be too slow. 
Might need to. Uh, that's that's what I was saying. You once you go into network storage, you have to rely on a lot of additional factors to see if things are going to work properly. And one of the primary things that these consoles bring is supposed to be speed. Yeah. I'd, like both consoles are like we boast speed in loading everything. Everything is fast. I'll just stick so to my So if you PC. add that layer, then suddenly you've bought down <laughs> this brand new piece of hardware with, you know, relying on a potentially unstable network, which most run of the mill parents are going to be like, we have a router that AT&T provided us. It probably works properly. <laughs> 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 and with that we're gonna no, take nothing against at&t love you at&t with that we're gonna take a short break <laughs> listen to a word did i miss something no <laughs> listen to a word from anchor our actual sponsor <laughs> welcome back and now is the time for what we've been playing serious I was the only, actually, Bruno was the only one that wasn't dancing this time. He didn't get the memo. That, that one's going to be tougher to edit because it's like, welcome back and into this other one. I'm going to have to remember that. I Drug, think Drug he was just Kelly fascinated by these that. strange no, people that no he was seeing on his monitor. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did I get myself into? Oh, these folks. So, um,. Start with game at the moment. I don't know what else we played this week. I haven't played anything else. I've oh, I have been playing Fortnite. Oh god, I just can't. Uh, anyway, um, you said it. I did, and yes, he has been, and he has been. I I've seen it. Oh my god, I'm like, oh, been. why isn't Mike responding to this question? Oh, because he's playing Fortnite. <sighs> anyway, <Ooh. laughs> so game at the moment this week. I played. A game that because of the week before we mentioned Power Washer Simulator, I thought, huh, that'd be interesting as a game of the moment. But I was like, I don't have that one, but I do have House Flipper. So I decided to play House Flipper for game of the moment. And if you're not familiar with House Flipper, House Flipper is literally what you would think most TV shows are like the house flipping shows where they go in, they buy a crappy house, they flip it and they tear down the walls, they resell it for like a million dollars or whatever. Um, same concept. It's just a game. Uh, but what's cool is that you get all the responsibilities of flipping this house without actually having to physically have money to go buy a real house uh, and then having to actually do all the work, which is even more terrible. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, really, really relaxing game. Uh, the, what, the videos out there, and I will say it at the beginning, is there is cockroaches in this game. So if you have, what is it, cursor, uh, carceridophobia? I can't, I can't, I can't remember. Say it. I'm terrible. I'm remembering this. I, I, that, this one was hard it. for. Um, hard but for if me. you have a fear Worse of roaches, uh, this game does have roaches in it. But the developers actually added in a feature to change the roaches into broken glass. <sighs> so if you want to be able to play the game, that's not a game breaker. You can actually disable it. Um, but I will say, like the roaches, like catsaridophobia. That thing. Catsaridophobia. Catsaridophobia. Okay. I will say that <laughs> to take over an alpha mic stream, yeah, um, <laughs> you, it, the, the roaches don't like scatter like roaches typically do. Like they they kind of like stay put. They're the most well-behaved, <laughs> trained roaches ever. So even when you're vacuuming them up, uh -huh, they're, they're just sitting there like <laughs> you're like, like I can't actually, get the one where how, how why is it it's not and you're like you try another angles yeah. it's like it stays there he's just there. hanging it's out like, just gotta gotta get the wait, right are you trying to get a roach oh. or are you trying to make a baby oh it depends uh, on which roach you're talking about oh my god well yeah Sorry. there we go and we're back. <laughs> uh so so it's no it, like it, it, if they added it in that the roaches would scatter that section of the game would take up like that oh is a Kelly's corner game if ever there was one. It, that would be a long be, time. It would be <laughs> half it'd be half an hour of you like sticking it behind glasses mm. and trying to get up behind the cabinet. Yes. Of, yeah. So with the vacuum. What I like about this game is there's multiple mm. parts uh, to me. Like I, I like to to break these off into sections. So the first section is when you buy the house, it's just trash. Usually it's like a zombie house flipper episode. Like everything is just trash. There's bags everywhere, of just garbage and bottles and uh, yeah. and all of that's and cockroaches and such. Uh, so you go through and you clean the house and you can either sell the furniture that's already there. So some of it's like just destroyed furniture. Um, some of it, it probably is salvageable if you want it to be. Uh, but you have to go through and clean the house. 
And then once that's completed, then you can go into the actual remodel phase where you do demo day, which a lot of the places talk about, like the demo day where you take the sledgehammer out and you just destroy <laughs> walls and stuff, uh, which you can do. Uh, and then I kind of do the remodeling phase. So I destroy walls. I design. I determine what the design of the layout of the house is going to be. Uh, because you can actually destroy the walls and build those walls, enter your walls back up. So you can make your own rooms. You can change the bathroom layout, the kitchen layout, whatever you want, wherever you want the place, the house to look. That's how you do it. And there and are no la- load bearing walls. apparently. Yeah, there's no load bearing walls. Any of these houses. Except the, so. the outer outer walls are the only thing that, that have to stay. Uh, so with that, um, once you've completed that portion, then you get to go into like the painting and stuff like painting the walls and you know, actually uh, and this is the part that actually kind of blew uh, both of their minds, uh, Kelly and Brian, was that mm-hmm. when you go to install sinks and showers and such, you have to install the actual installation of like the piping. And how to do that is literally you put down the kit uh, and you're like, oh, OK, cool. I'm going to put something here. It's going to mount to it. So you put that down. But when you go to install the actual shower, it actually makes you go through the motions of actually installing the shower. Like you have to place the place, the screws in, you have to turn the bolts, you have to turn the hose on, you got to put this part there, put this piece in that part. Mm -hmm. And, and it goes through all these different steps. You got to hook up the plumbing. It goes through all of the different steps, which is funny because when I got a new washer and dryer, when I installed all the washer and dryers in this game, when I got one, I was like, oh, right, I have to take these things out because there's like plugs that go into a new washing machine to keep the drum still. And I was like, oh, I know that because of this game. So <laughs> it is definitely simulation in that sense. Um, but overall, after this part, you can go into the actual uh, staging of the house if you want to. You can either sell it right then and make some money or you can stage it completely and really sell it for some money. Um, but overall, the game is a very relaxing, like just chill type of game where you can kind of just put it on the music's very relaxing that plays with it and it's if you get the satisfaction from like cleaning and doing these like tedious tasks that actually are seem to be actually relaxing uh this is a great game for that and it's funny because i was talking to uh one of our viewers squirrel nutkin about this game because he was watching our video and he was like you know hey uh about this game you know i'm watching your video and this thing da, 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 da. and i'm like yeah yeah it's fun and he's like Hmm. And then before I know it, like he had already bought the game and he's now playing it and he's like super into it because it reminds him a lot of like Fallout 4 where Fallout 4, there was the building mode. Um, but the difference is like there's no mutants trying to attack you. There's no raiders like trying to tear down your building. You're just <laughs> able to build and like, you know, clean and do the things you want to do. So uh, it is a, a very like a yeah, chill game. I, I'd highly recommend it for anybody that just wants to relax and just take your mind off of something. It's a great time yeah. for that. Uh, and I believe it's like, what, 20 bucks on Steam right now. Currently, I think what we said, uh, it does have HDTV add ons like DLC. Um, but the game also has Steam Workshop uh, capability, which you can download all the free assets that people have created on there, too. So you can like literally search for things that people have created models for. And and if you are Easter egg, if you are extra note, if you are a, a fan of Phasmophobia, uh, you'll notice that some of these assets are the same assets that are used in that game as well, because it's obviously an uh, asset pack that's used for for different games and 3D worlds like this. So really cool game. I definitely would advise you to check it out. I uh, that's pretty much all I have for this week. And, yeah, as you're saying, yeah, 1999 and Steam. See. Day drinker keeps us on the straight and narrow. No, I mean, I just. So did you guys play anything else? So I, I've been playing some stuff uh, or looking for some stuff uh, that I think might scare. Oh, God. Cicia. Mm. So if you have a and I will uh, send out a tweet. If you have a game that you think might make Zycia poop his pants, please send it to uh goa at sasgaming.com and tell us what that game is i've got a i've got one contender so far uh please help us out with this you know mike's going to do shocktober starting also to take Mm -hmm. this to the next level Mm -hmm. let's make it clear zombies running at him he has no problems with like that doesn't bother him (laughs) Yep, yep, I'm going to do this. Jump scares? Nah, he might jump, but they're really not. 
No, it's the creepy sounds and voices and like the psychological, like he can't see it. It's the creepiness. Like Aliens Isolation, he was bored. Yeah, I mean, I was bored in that game overall. Like I was very disappointed. in Yeah, that was definitely not not what he was. Whereas Phasmophobia, Mm -hmm. even though he likes playing it, it really creeps him out. I take it in doses. Like, all right, we'll play. All right, cool. So, I'll play like two, three rounds. I'm like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> you guys are fun. So, and and with that said, like Lunch Lady, which was made to like jump on the coattails of phasmophobia, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's just not creepy. It's just this crazy lunch lady that yeah. runs around and then when she catches you, it jump scare. Now it's a fun game. It was it was fun to play once or twice and everything. Uh, but it but it it A, it was not scary for Mike. Mm-hmm. Um I believe he took a picture of my buttocks uh, and um, cause I was down. So I was yeah. crawling around and, and yeah, it's, it's just a jump scare game. So what's the other one? The it's not a logical thrill, but the other one that we played at, 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 uh, was it, at dead of night. I think you would be scared of too. Uh, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. I don't, yeah. probably, I don't know if I'd want to play that one, but. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to because I mean, you're too scared. I don't know. So, oh, and oh, for everybody, about, everybody Mike. listening, just a, r- a reminder: um, so October is when Mike has to play games that might make him poop his pants because he's so scared, and all of the money that gets r- that we raise for this uh, gets uh, donated to Able Gamers. Able Gamers charity, and it's Able and it's set up, and it's and literally yeah. we're not holding money; yeah. like it literally no. set up from it's, the website. 100 percent of it you donate goes, goes straight yeah. to them and doesn't go to us and we decide yes. on what the subscription you know it's it's literally straight to them watch uh, my i'm get just scared. raising money to help out children yeah. so yeah it's uh it's for a good cause but i don't want to mm-hmm. be scared too much <laughs> <laughs> i do i do so oh, bad man. i want to be scared too like i want to be scared <laughs> with you so if i don't yeah, think but that he helps doesn't want to be scared yeah. but which is makes well, we it don't even care better what he <laughs> we don't want. Right, that's want. the point <laughs> yeah this is that's true. absolutely this the point is, is he doesn't want to be scared. So that makes it so much better. Yeah. No, I know the other game that you're talking about, Mike, because it was the one that didn't have as much replay pacify pacify. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That one. Great. Pacify game. It was scary. less, yeah. less replayability. Yeah. It was, yeah. um, it was interesting because remember the first time we played it, it was not me that was scared. I was dying laughing <laughs> at the other members of our party that were just really <laughs> terrified. I was crying because it was so there were people that so funny to me. Noped out and did not come back to that game. <laughs> like something like, about the little like dolls, the the little puppets or oh, dolls. Okay, like, I yeah. loved it when I loved it when I was transformed into a little doll and I was chasing y'all around <laughs> and jumping super high in the air. Yeah. And everybody was like, what the like your guys's faces when you saw that for the first time it yeah, was that was one of those things that, balls. Like, again the replayability is not there but it yeah. is a fun yeah fun little game to play um but yeah i died laughing at that one so yeah it is it is interesting there, there are certain mm-hmm. things that do scare me and it is mm-hmm. odd because like yeah zombies i can play zombie games all day long like that doesn't surprise me yeah. it doesn't matter at all to me but creepy things like playing phasmo for the first time and even now still kind of creeps me yeah. out yeah even me, I, I I look forward to it. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'll go down this hall by myself. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny because it always knocks me down. There's always a point where I start getting too big for my britches and I go into Phasma. And I'm like, oh, yeah, come here, ghost. Come do something. Yeah, you can't mess with me. And then it really scares me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm done. I'm I get off <laughs> immediately. And I'm like, I'm not playing this game again for another week. <laughs> oh, well, no wonder you like it if you get off immediately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Sometimes it takes them a while. Yeah. Anyway, send us a submission so we can get that <laughs> I mean, set up. We're this not week. here to kink shame yeah. or set that up for this month upcoming. So it'll be every and five Fridays next uh, month, upcoming. next month. So five Fridays. And then obviously the day before Halloween, I'll be in character <laughs> at something. I'll decide on what I'm going to wear. So oh my come hang out and uh, support a good cause. So with that, let's move into our short news. I wasn't going to throw the papers again. Good. Good call. Oh, this is mine. <laughs> and and I'm Kelly, sorry. it's like it's only Thursday. I got to pick those up. Everything I said before is incorrect. What did you? You, say? you are a oh. wise. <laughs> no. 
woman. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Who's very strong. Mm. Yes. Don't worry. I know. Alpha. <laughs> we learned that. <laughs> she is. She is. She is. Yeah, definitely alpha. <laughs> Except for the whole sorry thing that she just did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe so, you're supposed to say F you. I mean, F you. I don't have to edit that part out. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's just an F and a U. Mm, exactly. It's just Fu, the guy who comes back 20 years later to take over the world. Mm-hmm. Fu. Uh, Mike, Foo. if you can start. My I say 15 seconds again. in, and Brian had wasted 15 seconds. I'm back on the clock. Well, I don't know. Don't you, know get your, you get your time we back. We did not start. All right. Here, here. There you go. So. <laughs> I, I'd like the fact that he has those. At the same time, I don't. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'll just go over anyway, so it doesn't freaking matter. Yeah, um, okay. Who likes board games as much as Phoenix Nova? Uh, I would say me. Not a one of you. I mean, I, I me. love board games, but I think he, of all of us, he probably likes them as he, more he's, than anybody. Yeah, I would say he's, he's yeah. probably better. Than me. Who loves Ikea? More than anybody else. More than Kelly. Um, Kelly just loves Kelly. Ikea more yes. than anyone else. What yes. is Kelly? Who is Kelly? <laughs> who, who is Kelly? <laughs> um, so Kelly, Kelly's going to be taking a trip to my house soon. Yes. Yes. 100%. And we're going to play board games all the time. Um, so there is a piece of, there is a book, book, I'll call it a bookcase um, called the Kalax at, at Ikea. And it's literally just squares. But it is the best bookcase to store your board games. Only problem is, you know, when you store them, you either have to store them like on top of each other and then you pull one out and things get jostled or you have to put them on their sides. And therefore, uh, therefore, like everything's like falling and things are getting opening. You're ruining stuff. Well, this uh, uh, company has started a, it's a startup a kickstarter called the lax racks where it is a bracket that will attach to the side of the kalax both sides get to each side and then uh rods or a piece of like plexiglass and you can store your board games safely without hurting each other i I, I think I'm going hurting to be each other. I mean, hurting each other. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like, don't hurt each other. Sorry, I have kids um, without scratching the box top, Quit touching and, each other. Yeah. And, and, and hitting the back of the uh, the back of the bookshelf, which is just your wall. So. Yeah, that's I pretty cool. I'm, gonna be, mm-hmm. I'm in for that. <sighs> Next up is a new release of uh, what we would call today DLC or a mod of a game. Uh, but back in the day, it wasn't called that because this isn't a mod. This is a wad. That's right. Somebody released a new wad or is going to release soon a new wad for Doom called Thatcher's Tech Base, which apparently sends you to the 10th circle of hell, which is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in the 1980s. (laughs) And you will fight um, this demonic Margaret Thatcher and all of her demon fiends. This cracks me up. (laughs) I have no clue, but the fact that people are still making wads for Doom, the original Doom is amazing. Yeah. So for one of those uh, totally unnecessary things that nobody really needs uh, from a company that should never be making things like this, Razer (laughs) has decided that as a gamer, you need to be able to have finger sleeves so you can you can optimize your maximum potential. Finger sleeves. So the latest gear they have is called the Hardcore Thimbles that cost $9.99. And they're basically finger condoms for your razor fingers. Uh, And there are two included in each one. They're called Gamer Finger Sleeves. And Razor says they're made of the smooth, high-sensitive fabric. (laughs) You don't want to get your keyboard pregnant? Come on. I mean, 
I mean, literally. I guess. You had the donut or, manufacturers. Or, or, your, or your smartphone or your controller, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Literally, this all started with the donut manufacturers, and they punched the hole out of the middle of the donuts. And it's not like they didn't take that dough and put it in the back and then make more donuts out of it. But they're like, oh, let's just punch the hole out and fry it. We'll sell the donut holes, right? This is literally Razor looking mm. at fingerless gloves and then like, hey, look at that thing. You cut off all the end of these gloves. We just sell that and put it on the end of your fingers. I will say that article was probably one of the funniest articles I've read <laughs> in a very long time. They were like, and it was not supposed just- to be funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was definitely a satirical article. Like It was definitely like, oh, why not just cover your fingers and your toes? You can do it all for 50, yeah, 50 bucks. bucks. Yeah, it's like, oh, my God. It's it's a gamer's nightmare to get hot fingers oh during God. intense gameplay. So it's good that Razor thought of that. Mm-hmm. What? It does sound like an onion article. I yes. Know. Yes, it did. It, definitely, not. It, it read like <laughs> one. Oh, man. Uh, I, I mean, moving on to a different li- kind of joke. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to insult this guy too bad. He he did make good music. Uh, composer Marty O'Donnell. Um, he's Bungie's former audio director. He works on he's worked on obviously <laughs> Destiny and before that Halo um, It's kind of uh, in hot water, so to speak. He uh, he essentially went. He got let go from Bungie and he decided that he was going to use the music that he produced, but does not have ownership of um, for his own personal gain, essentially releasing it on his SoundCloud and tweeting about it. Um, So Bungie was like, nah, fam, that's not cool. (laughs) Um, And they uh, they've come after him. So now he's um, being essentially taken to court for hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. And he's asking his fans or people on twitter for assistance in covering those expenses um and he's been just in general really weird saying that um the ceo of bungie is going to get him banned from twitter um but then he never got banned from twitter but he keeps essentially asking for money from people so it's all very very odd and weird and almost kind of sad and i I don't feel bad from kind of way but what the (laughs) hell are you doing kind of way yeah All right. Do you love Halloween? Do you not as much lo- as you? <laughs> yeah, really. Do you love playing Among Us? <clears throat> Do you want to be an imposter for Halloween? Oh well, God, you can. <laughs> if you go to uh, Amazon, apparently they're sold out there. Uh, Walmart or HMV, uh, which I think is like a North American retailer, retailer, um, or a Canadian retailer. I don't know. I, somebody correct me on that. Um, a re- you grab tire? Uh, no, it's not. A, not it. Not it. The other, the, the correct name for that. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it looks actually pretty cool to the point where I actually thought maybe I should get one. And side note, if you are a, a of the taller variety. Uh, Phoenix, he can't fit into this because it kind of tops out at five eight. Sorry, dude. Oh man! So there go my Perfect. dreams of all four of us being. Damn, that would actually fit me. Hey, I'm fine with this thing only getting down to my knees if it means that all four it of us get dressed up. It did say your ankles might stick out. So what if what uh, if you cut a hole in the top of it, stuck your head through, made it seal around your neck, and then just poured blood all over it like it was wearing your head as a hat? <laughs> there you go. I mean, all you have to. I do... I also like the fact. I also like the fact that they have little zippers so that you can like stick your hands out. Tyrannosaurus Rex You can, style. you can. Yes, yes, yes. I'll say all you have to but, do is stick your hands out and you can be, uh, what's the other game? The, the jelly bean game. Oh, um, Fall Guys. Fall Guys. Fall Guys, yeah. yeah. You can be Fall Guys. Put your hands out. Yes, <laughs> that's true. The other jelly bean game. I love it. Yeah. And our next story, since we're talking about scary things for people, this is scary yes. for uh, Blizzard, at least. Um, yeah. They're once again in the same bullshit they've been in for a long time. Um, Blizzard, man. They, uh, they're they being uh, taken Shh. to task once more over their terrible, terrible labor policies. It's not exactly clear what people are trying to essentially take them down for this time. It seems to revolve around them 
forcing arbitration um, instead of taking like legal issues um, the correct way for who knows what kinds of things. It's Blizzard. They're really good at just trying to pretend nothing's wrong and moving mm-hmm. on with their lives. Um, unfortunately fine. for them, fine. everybody else is really good at not letting them move on with their lives <laughs> because they shouldn't be allowed to anyways. So take number 73 this year probably at this point because they're being sued for legitimately everything you could be sued for at this point. <laughs> By the state and everything. Like, that's just ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, at this point, uh, there's more lawsuits in one year than there's been content additions since the dawn of World of Warcraft. Wow. Okay. <laughs> If you're a fan of, <laughs> sorry, that's just crazy. If you're a fan of Age of Empires, uh, Age of Empires 4 is going to be released very soon by Microsoft. They announced it recently that they were making it, and here we are. We're getting close to that. Uh, so they actually announced that this Friday, uh, so on the tomorrow's date, the 17th, uh, they're going to start stress testing. So if you're interested on September 17th, you can go over to their announcement page, uh, which they basically have a link to Steam and also to the Xbox store, uh, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, running through 6 p.m. or I'm sorry, 10 a.m. PT, 6 p.m. BST this Friday. Uh, they don't really have a when it's over, but they're going to be doing it for probably, by, I would think probably the weekend or maybe the day. Um, but if you're interested in playing it, they're going to do a test thing, uh, test uh, stress test. So if you want to get on, check it out, play it, see what it's like. Feel free to do that for free. And if you're interested in listening to this podcast um, as just the audio version, there's a 50% chance you will have already missed the window for this. Just saying that. (laughs) No. (laughs) You're going to be fast. (laughs) Everything's great. I might not edit it by then. Continue. That's it. (laughs) Okay, so in the vein of Sony continuing to take their games and trying to make movies out of them, like uncharted which is still on its way out apparently it was just announced that anthony mackie of of course the falcon slash captain america fame uh is being put forward as being the head or you know main attraction in a adaptation of the PlayStation game Twisted Metal. They're going to take a car combat game whose number one character was named Axel or the cl- or the ice cream clown guy that who's pretty good too. Yeah. Sweet too. Uh Axel is just a guy with arms for axles and two big wheels. Uh no word on who Anthony Mackie's actually going to play, but uh should be interesting. It's going to be terrible. No, I'm sold. Interesting. I'll watch it. And I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I watched Death Race. I mean, come on. <clears throat> so there's But a... did you watch the sequel? Yes. <laughs> Sad. All right. Um, there's a game called Webbed, which if you like puzzly games like me, it it's definitely up our alley. Um, in the development of this game, though, uh, the game is about a Two little spiders. One of them gets like abducted by a bird and you're off to save your friend. Well, if you're afraid of spiders, you can still play this game because they have an arachnophobia mode Um, (laughs) in the development of the game. They kind of like basically like just just took off the legs. They had people playing it. They're like still looks very spidery. You like throw spider web so they made it uh like a pink puff ball and it looks super cute so that, yeah that is pre if you're if you're watching it uh that is pre puff ball pink puff ball that's very still spidery <laughs> but it's a super I cute mean, game and it looks like a lot of fun and i'm about to download it <laughs> God. I just love the fact that this is a platforming game mm-hmm. with web mechanics yeah. that you can play as a spider or pink puffball, whatever. Yeah. And you can shoot things. Yeah. Like I'm watching. It does have a trailer type. <laughs> I'm watching the trailer and the bird comes <laughs> along and carefully grabs one spider in its claw. Mm-hmm. And the other one starts shooting lasers at it. And I'm like, <laughs> what kind of game is this? This is my kind of game. 
<laughs> I like a game where the spiders have lasers. <laughs> right? We'll make, we'll, we'll make him play that for, we'll make Zeiss play that for Shocktober. <laughs> nah, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to scare him the way I want it to. I don't think it's going to scare him, but he's going to like just have this puzzled, quizzical look on his face the entire time. Guess I'll right, stop. You know the what? Timer. I'm, I'm steal. I'm stealing the show now. I'm, I'm taking over. Just take right? it. And and talking about <laughs> stolen things, that's exactly what we're going to speak of right now. It revolves Ooh. around an NFT game. Those are non fungible tokens, which I'm not going to bother getting into the <laughs> specifics of because holy hell, there's not enough time. Um, but essentially, it's a blockchain based game called Epic Hero Battles, and um, it's supposed to essentially be you buy. The, the game, you make money off of the characters that exist within it or whatever being NFTs themselves and having value and they're randomly generated, except now everyone's questioning how randomly generated they will be since they're stealing art from another oh. game that is much more popular called Wildfire. Oh. And this came to light, actually, because one of the creators for Wildfire, Dan Hindes, actually came out and said, OK, NFTs, now you've made this personal. Um, they legitimately, it wasn't even like the, like a soft steal. They just straight up stole the art from wildfire and then reused it for their own garbage. Um, and, uh, All now stealing, there's some back and forth going, uh, the battle hero account has since been deactivated slash vanished from existence in some shape or form. Um, oh I'm not sure if that was a ban from the Twitter side or if the person deleted their account, um, understanding that, um, they were screwed. Ugh. that's one way. And to wrap it up too much to no avail. If you're familiar with the brand GameStop or the, the sick memes from wall street bets over GME stock, they, like the stock. they announced, uh, their earnings recently, which were, to no one's surprise, pretty high because people invested a lot of money into GameStop, which was able to like bail them out for one and now like hey. plan out their new future, which they have announced that they're moving beyond video games as they're evolving into a technology company. What? <laughs> uh, so hey, you know. this article talks about as a GameSpot article, but it actually comes. It talks about like, well, if you're if you've been to a store, it's not new that they have Funko Pops mm -hmm. and they have all these like you know, toys and like just geek things because they also bought out Think Geek probably yeah. I don't know how many years ago. So that kind of brought that that space into there. Um, but after the announcement of their actual earnings, uh, they're going to be trying to move into more of a growing market of having more items of technology and gaming stuff related, not just video games. So that's kind of where they're going with that. Side note, Think Geek used to be my place to go to for all presents for anybody much oh, yeah. probably much to people's chagrin but i loved it. yeah i still like going to gamestop because Man, of think geek mm -hmm. you know People love packs in the past uh quick question so if gamestop is dropping the games are they just gonna be known as stop and they're gonna be called your, tech stop your dad jokes are getting that really was my bad. next one was tech stop yeah your one-stop shop for tech or or Man, or like maybe brands manager. <laughs> maybe they're <laughs> Miss maybe McCauley. they're trying to. You still Japanese can, skate. Bruno. You still can. <laughs> maybe they're trying to appeal to the geriatric demographic, and they're going to be called are Stop you, Tech. Are you are you, you saying I'm geriatric? Man? So no, not this you. reminds me of the Jim Gaffigan skit. When I he's talking think about geek. I said Stop Tech, like Hot Pockets. Mm. He's like, what are we going to call them in Mexico? And he's like, Cayente Pocket. <laughs> and he's like, You're a genius. <laughs> That's you're you. a genius. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Song. So, if you want to talk to us, uh, send us an email. Send it to or over you to can GOA. chat with us at sasgaming.com, or you can chat with us, or you can just not you can do any of this. Just call me. My email. number is five 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 eight six seven one two one two three zero nine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Again, this is what got our attention this week. Uh, if you're interested in supporting us uh, more than you already probably have through chat or through any other ways, uh, feel free to reach out to our Patreon, patreon.com slash sasgaming, where you can find uh, our ad-free content, some more extra videos that um, we'll eventually put out. 
I don't know, maybe some Discord perks that we already have and some other things. But check it, it out. We may, appreciate it. Maybe some Halloween decorations. Yeah. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to do plug again Shocktober. So Shocktober is coming up and we do have we're going to have a lineup, whether I like it or not. Uh, but mm -hmm. again, it is for raising money for Able Gamers Charity, which helps kids that are disabled be able to have controllers and things to be able to to let them play video games and enjoy the things that we take for granted. So um, super cool charity. Go check them out. The Able Gamers about to work, I believe. Uh, but it's really great. Just it's it's awesome. Go check it out. So with that being said, that's uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> Until next hey, but time. As, as Demir would say, I thought you were going to say she's, the line. No, she's waiting for you to Canadian it up. Yeah, Canadian it up. Oh, Take oh her easy, bud. <laughs> <laughs> we have been. We have been. The last couple, we've been like, we've been missing Take you. Take her easy, bud. You, we totally have, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've been torching yeah. something, that's for sure. <laughs> you guys hey. take it easy. <laughs> take her easy, guys. <laughs> <laughs>